It's really not about me. It's really all about you. It's really all about you. So I'll give you time to let go of what's hurting inside. It's really not about me. It's really all about you. Yeah, that's my song on y'all. What's up y'all? This is be your boy Scotty and this is my review on SWV Reunited Season 1 Episode 3. What's up y'all? Um, you know, I just watched the show just a minute ago. It's like 2.47 in the morning and you know that um, I straight up got clowned because I was singing in my videos. You know, some, you know, some faceless ass bitch seen my video and then she just... All she could do was use the word faggot. I mean, everybody knows that I can't sing. Even though I know my tone deaf ass can't sing. So, I don't really get why bitches think that they can come up on your video and disrespect you. And then she want to say that she was giving me views. I mean, the last time I checked, Mr. Steel Standing was popping long before a bitch came up on his videos trying to diss him. I mean, what makes you think that I need you to get views when you're giving me your money, basically? I mean, you keep... Refreshing your page. You, you said that you can't stop watching a video because you and your girls are laying on the floor laughing at me. And I'm sick. I'm, and I'm looking like, okay, keep doing it. You're only putting revenue dollars in my pocket. Think about that before you try to diss me because you're not doing anything but putting money in my wallet. So, thank you. So, let's get into um, the video. So, SWV is um, going to meet with Essence magazine and they have a um it's they have an interview with them and it's revealed that coco has not talked to her son for the last few months and i'm sitting up here like what the hell is going on coco like really what the fuck is going on like for you not to be talking to your son for months something is wrong with that you don't even know where he is and then the top and then the top all off Taj, who is his godmother, didn't even know that anything like that was going on. Taj is at, has actually talked to Coco's son on Facebook. They've even responded to each other on Facebook. And she didn't even know that he wasn't even at home with Coco. Don't you think that Taj should have known about this? You know, it's really crazy. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'm sitting up here like, some ain't right. Like, you know, Coco is a raging bitch, so... The fact that her own son just ran away from home and don't even want to speak to her, won't even tell her where the hell he at, is killing me. And, you know, as we look into the interview, you know, um, they start, the woman asks Coco about her gospel career. She says that she's going to do something soon. So that's what makes the girls get annoyed and, and it takes them all the way back to the shit that happened in the past. My thing about it is, Coco, you are being selfish. Like, you still trying to make a solo career happen. And it didn't happen when you came out with Hot Coco. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, Sunshine was my jam back in the fifth grade. But at the end of the day, you're missing the point. Like, it's, it does confuse the fans when one minute you're singing about, I love you, Lord. Blah, 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 blah. And then the next minute you're saying, you gotta go downtown. You know, at the end of the day, you are confusing your fans. And then at the same time, you're making it hard for Lily and Taj. Because y'all have a lot of sexual songs. And at this point, because of your Christian beliefs, you can't even sing the motherfucking songs. And I just feel like all this Christian beliefs shit is some bullshit in my opinion. And I might sound a little bit ignorant when I say this. But, I mean, Christians fuck too. Preachers fuck too. How the fuck do they get kids? They obviously fuck. So at the end of the day, I just feel like Coco just being selfish. And she's just missing the entire point. And she just didn't want to get it. So Jeff Robinson got them a meeting with Sony Records. And when I heard that they got a record, you know, they got a meeting with Sony. I thought that that was a huge thing. Considering the fact that SWV, before I Missed Us came out back in 2012, they hadn't released the album since 97. So, for them to be gone for over 15 years and, and able to meet up with a major label like this is a big thing. But, you know, as I heard Taj talking about, um, talking about, you know, the, 
the the um the, the album the last album they did which was I Missed Us it only sold 60k in total and you know she was saying that you know the label heads was telling her were telling them that they should be happy that they sold 60,000 copies but they were used to selling millions of records so it was a disappointment to them newsflash Taj this is not 92, this is not 96, and this is not 97. The three years y'all released albums on major labels. First of all, you were gone for 15 years. Number two, you only had an, an, a single that was only released to urban adult contemporary radio, which is really the stations, the soft soul stations that most older people listen to, you know, the adult stations. You only had a single that was only released there, and you had a video directed by Derek Blanks. I never seen y'all send it to 106 and Park. I only seen it on YouTube. I never really seen it on a nationwide scale. And then on top of that, y'all were on an independent label. Y'all already knew what y'all was getting yourselves into when you got with the independent label. When you were the independent label, you're not going to have that big of a budget. And for y'all to sell 60,000 copies and then get a Grammy nomination and a Soul Train nom, um, that, that was a big thing. And it did show that you guys were still somewhat in demand. So I think you should have been happy with those numbers, especially for independent artists. So we get into, um, you know, the meeting that, you know, the little therapy session that they had. And I'm sitting up here like Coco was being a bitch. And I'm like, she really going to make me Kelly Price her ass. So when they get into the, to the, um, get deep, deep, deep into the therapy session, Coco said that she had a grudge with Todd since 1992. And Lily said that she feels like she's in the middle between Coco and Taj. It's always tension between Coco and Taj. So, Coco says that her reason for holding a grudge from 92 all the way on down is because of a, of a situation that happened when, from management, a manager told her that Taj was reporting back to her back to them about what she was doing while they were on the road and Coco felt like she didn't you know Tasha didn't have her back like why would she tell what she was doing and that was supposed to be her sister and Taj feels like you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying she never came to her about it she would always believe what other people had to say instead of asking them about it treating them like second rate citizens you know what I mean meaning that Coco was hard to get along with so we get into another scenario when Coco talked about people only love her because she's Coco and she got a voice nobody cares about Cheryl nobody gives a fuck about her but everybody cares about Coco and then Tasha like she didn't really know what to say because all she knew was that Coco was a nasty bitch she said that she was hurt by Coco because Coco actually did have cancer in the past Taj lost both of her parents to cancer by the time she was the age of 14 and Coco did not bother to tell her about that. And I really do feel Taj on this. She probably felt like, you know what I'm saying? I'm hurt. I lost both of my parents to motherfucking cancer. And you mean to tell me that you didn't think I would understand? And then, you know, that's hurtful for your friend. Somebody you've known since you were about eight or nine years old to keep something that, that, you know, heavy from you. That's not a fun thing. And I feel like Coco needs to understand that that's not a fun thing. You know what I'm saying? And she was like... I wanted you to hold me down. And that really made me want to cry. I'm like, these girls really have issues and they have to get through them. They have to get past them. And um, when Lily started talking, it really made me want to cry. When she talked about after the group broke up, she was staying in the hotel. She was down to her last $200. And when that invoice came in, she knew she was done. She knew she had to live out of her car. And at the end of the day, she wanted to end her life. She was ready to end it all. And it just seemed like when SWV broke up, it was so many, it was so much negativity around their breakup that they didn't want to have nothing else to do with SWB. And I feel like that was really fucked up back then. Coco and Corey talk. And Corey just ain't nothing but a flame and queen to me. I don't really like him. I don't really care to talk about what even happened with them because, you know, he's just a flame and queen. He can never get his point across without yelling or throwing the fact that SWB won shit until he came along. But he did agree to meet up with Jeff. So, um, Corey and Jeff met up and they decided that they were going to work together. And that everything was going to be fine. Todd's birthday came around. Eddie threw a surprise birthday party for her. She was very surprised. She didn't even know that he was going to do that. And then after that was over. He pretty much dropped this bomb on her. That he's going to be taking um, a job that's going to you know, pretty much send him 
to New York full time. And she doesn't want to live in New York anymore. So they have to figure out what they're going to do about that. But this is this was my review on SWV Reunited. Um, follow me on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash Miss Underscore Still Standing Without the G. Make sure y'all follow me on Instagram at Rebellious Underscore Scotty. And be sure to like my, te- my, my Facebook fan page. Just type in Team Scotty and like that page. I'm trying to get to 200 likes. So y'all need to come on with it. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.